Hey, how's it going guys? Captain Cuba here, and today I think I'm bringing you my magnum opus, the king of my theories. Before today, I thought the highlight of my theories was my video regarding Modi still being alive, but I think this theory has dethroned it. Now, I understand this may sound pretty pretentious to some of you, but I promise you, if you watch this video, you will leave with a pretty good theory regarding this mysterious tapestry which depicts Tyr visit in the Greek pantheon. And at first this might sound like a pointless topic, Tyr loved to visit other pantheons, what's the big deal? The big deal is that the item he's given the humans will be very important to the events of God of War Ragnarok. So let me stop this rambling and finally get to today's video. The picture in question is this one. It's a picture of one of Tyr's tapestries that depicts him giving the Greeks something. Now, I've noticed how much God of War fans love to discuss the mural in Jotunheim, but not many of them pay enough attention to this one, which in my opinion is just as mysterious if not more. And during my recent musings, I've come to the conclusion that the item Tyr is giving the humans will be very important to the events of God of War Ragnarok. But before we can discuss the purpose of this item, we have to answer another important question. When in the history of the Greek pantheon did this meeting take place? From God of War 2018, we know that Tyr was a god interested in traveling to other pantheons and exchanging information with them with the pursuit of knowledge and the betterment of humanity. But in which period of the Greek pantheon does this scene take place? All we know is that humans existed at that point, but that's the problem. To this day, we're not very sure who created the humans in the Greek pantheon. Were they created during the rule of Uranus and the Titans, or were they created by Zeus and the gods of Olympus? Believe it or not, there's many conflicting answers to this question. The answer that my friend Eman and I reached is that humans were created by the Titans, but it wasn't until Prometheus gave them the fire of Olympus that they began to prosper. Zeus didn't like this, and thus sentenced Prometheus to a lifetime of torture. Now, because the mortals of this tapestry seem to be more civilized than how they were depicted during the rule of the titans, I have to conclude that the moment recorded in the tapestry must have taken place after Prometheus gave humanity the fire of Olympus. But this is not very helpful, this could have taken place any number of years after. Was it during the early years of Zeus being the king of Olympus? Was it during the time Kratos was a baby? Was it during the time he was the god of war? Or was it after Olympus was destroyed by Kratos? This might seem like a hard question at first, but there is one clue in this tapestry that tells us exactly when this moment takes place. And the clue is, the whole tapestry. I understand this sounds weird, but hear me out. The fact that Tyr is openly talking and exchanging gifts with the mortals of the Greek pantheon tells me that the Olympian gods are nowhere to be found. Or aka dead. Because Zeus, the king of Olympus, would have never allowed a god from another land to walk freely in his pantheon, as well as giving his worshippers gifts that might make them more powerful. If you don't believe me, look at what happened to Prometheus when he gave humans the fire of Olympus. I also want to point out that Tyr didn't come to Greece by himself. If you look at the tapestry closer, you will see that he came with his army. The last people who did this in the God of War universe were the Persians, and the gods sent Kratos to kill them. Olympus has sent a message, and I am here to deliver it. So the fact that Tyr is able to simply park his ship on Olympus tells me that this scene takes place after Kratos destroyed Olympus. But what exactly is Tyr giving the mortals of the Greek pantheon? God of War fans have given many answers to this question. Everything from one of those devices that spins around runes, to a sword hilt, to uh, well, I'm pretty sure I can't say that word here on YouTube anymore. But I think all of these answers are wrong. I think this item needs to be something really, really special. And in order to know what this item is, we have to know a little about Tyr's personality and what the mortals of the Greek pantheon needed the most after Kratos left their realm. So let's take these two questions one at a time. Like I said before, Tyr is unlike any of the other gods from the God of War universe. Instead of seeking power to oppress his followers, he preferred to find ways to help them. He stopped wars and was the main force behind the construction of the Midgard Temple, which had the purpose of unifying all the realms. Tyr, despite him being a god of war, was a pretty nice guy. So I don't think whatever Tyr has given the mortals here is a weapon or anything that would cause destruction. Quite the opposite, in fact. And it turns out that Greek mortals at this point in their history need just that. I've always said that after Kratos left the Greek pantheon, humans used the power of hope given by Kratos to rebuild the pantheon. And while that can work with physical things such as houses and temples, the Greeks couldn't do too much with hope when it came to fixing the calamities Kratos unleashed on their world. Think about it, how is the power of hope going to fix the sun being blocked out by the clouds? Or a plague, or a flood, you get my point. Magical problems require a magical solution. And this is where Tyr's item comes in. 
We've already established that Tyr visited the Greek pantheon after the destruction of Olympus, because Zeus would have never allowed this meeting to take place. And at this moment in the history of Greece, the thing the mortals needed the most is to put the realm back in order. So doesn't it make sense to think that Tyr gave them a device that can do just that? Restored their pantheon back to normal. Now, I know some of you are going to ask, how the Helheim did Tyr make a device with that kind of power? And the answer is pretty simple. Mimir told us in God of War 2018. How did Tyr do this? Odin suspected the giants secretly possessed some remnant of primordial Jotnar creative essence, the stuff all realms are made of. The giants gave Tyr primordial creative essence. Creative essence. The essence used to create the nine realms. If my theory is correct, not only did Tyr use this Jotnar creative essence to build the Unity Stone, but he also made this device capable of restoring life and order to a pantheon. But it gets even better. I still haven't answered the important question. What would be the role of this item in God of War Ragnarok? The answer to this question can be found in the word Ragnarok itself. One of the main similarities between God of War 3 and God of War Ragnarok is the backdrop of the story. In both games, the worlds or pantheons are destroyed beyond recognition. According to the Prose Eddas, during Ragnarok, all the trees and mountains will fall to the ground. Fenrir will scorch the earth with fire, Jormungandr will poison the oceans, the skies will crack open and fire giants will descend to cause more destruction. If this description of Ragnarok is to be believed, and I am correct that this item is used to restore the life and order to a pantheon, then this means Tyr is most likely going to send Kratos and Atreus to the Greek pantheon to retrieve it in order to fix the Norse pantheon after Ragnarok leaves it in ruins. But how exactly will they travel there? God of War Ragnarok is after all the last game in the Norse pantheon. So it's not like Santa Monica can take 3 game hours so Kratos and Atreus can go on a boat trip to Greece. This would ruin the pacing of the story and it wouldn't leave much time for characters such as Freya, Thor and Odin to be developed. This trip needs to happen in the blink of an eye for it to work. And it turns out that there's an item with those very same powers. The previously mentioned Unity Stone. Look, clearly that's Tyr. Traveling somehow. Perhaps magically. Now I know that the Jotunheim Tower swallowed the Unity Stone. But I'm sure Tyr, the creator of the tower and the Unity Stone, can get it out with no problem. This would allow Kratos and Atreus to momentarily go back to Greece and retrieve this item with the power to fix the Norse Pantheon. But what will they find when they get there? The scene depicted in the tapestry happened many years prior to the events of God of War 2018. I'm sure this has given the mortals of that Pantheon enough time to change their way of life. I personally think the Greek mortals have moved away from worshipping gods and instead turned to technological advancement. So if Kratos and Atreus were to return, I'm sure they would see things such as huge buildings, intricate contraptions, maybe even guarding automatons with the purpose of defending their pantheon. They would also have a new ruler, but I'm not talking about that person just yet. The theory of Kratos going back to Greece for a short trip is one that many fans of the series love to discuss, but we always lacked a good story reason for it. The best theory fans could come up with was a theory regarding the retrieval of the Blade of Olympus to defeat Odin. But I've always said that Santa Monica wouldn't repeat the getting blades moment again. At least with my theory, they'll be retrieving something else that can easily be tied to the story of the next game, Ragnarok. So what do you guys think about my theory? Do you think I cracked the mystery behind this tapestry? Did Tyr give the Greek mortals a device able to put their pantheon back in order? Or do you think this device is something else? Whatever your thoughts and theories are, make sure to leave them in the comments section below. Also, I wanted to apologize because I hadn't uploaded a video in a while, and the truth is, I was really busy just uh, getting the cat in Winnipeg with Konoruhi, so that took almost a day and a half, and I just couldn't edit this video. I was almost done with it, but I couldn't upload it, uh, and I wanted to do a good job for you guys. But I promise you, this month I'm going to focus more on uploading videos, because it's very likely that Sony's going to have a PlayStation showcase again, and God of War Ragnarok will be featured. So I want to build up the hype train for you guys again, so yeah. Anyway, as always, I want to thank all of my members for supporting this channel monthly. People like Roy Barkham, Zachary Powell, Ezra Imran, Jeffrey DeMonte, Iman R, Stephen Reeves, Connor Ruhi. There's just so many of you guys that just support this channel so much and I couldn't be more appreciative. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I would also like to thank everyone who likes and shares my videos. I know it doesn't seem like much, but trust me guys, it really does help. So with that said, thanks for watching and remember, Go forth in the name of Ragnarok.